everyone. I'm Brock with PDQ. And today I've got a pretty special video today. Today we're going to cover kind of a high level overview of what PDQ Connect is and what it can do. Uh, because it's high level and because we've got a lot to get through, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on any one specific feature, but if there's something you want to learn more about, we're going to link our uh, Getting Started series down in the description. So if you see something as we cover it that you wanna learn more about, check out the Getting Started series. We've most likely talked about it there. Now, who is this video for? This is for people who may be brand new customers of PDQ Connect that are just trying to get a lay of the land, figure out how it works, where everything is. Uh, this is also for those people that are considering maybe implementing Connect for their organization and wanna see what it can do. So there's a few things that I wanna stress. PDQ Connect, we really focused on ease of use. So you don't have to go out and get certified don't have to dedicate an employee to use it. Pretty much anyone can pick this up and use it. The second is, is speed, how fast that you can deploy applications, run scripts, things like that. And then lastly is just how much information is available to you in PDQ Connect as soon as those devices come online. So let's dive into the product and let's go through the demo, okay? All right, this first page this is where you're gonna wanna start. And if you're brand new to PDQ Connect, you're, what you're gonna wanna do is get the agent installed on your devices. So you'll start on this devices tab. Down here at the very bottom, you see this download agent installer. That's gonna go ahead and download the agent for you. And if we open that up, you can see download is super quick. It's only like five megabytes. So you can get that deployed to your uh, endpoints with PDQ deploy, uh, SCCM, Intune, you know, you, whatever way works best for you, just get that pushed out to your endpoints. And as soon as it's installed, your devices are gonna come online and this is where they're gonna start reporting in, okay? So let's go ahead and pick on Iro here. So when a device comes online, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on your device there and then you're gonna be brought to this page that gives you all the information that PDQ Connect scans for, okay? So there's tons of great stuff in here. You got host name information, you've got operating system information, hardware information, what I recommend is going through each of these tabs and seeing what information they contain because there's a lot of useful stuff in here. Uh, you got Windows features, Windows updates. A big one's gonna be your software tab where you can see all the software that is installed on this device. There's a couple other things I wanna point out before we move on. We've got the files and folders page here and we've also got the registry page here. These two pages are linked to custom scanners which we'll talk about more in just a second. But whenever you build out a custom scanner, they are gonna return the results here on each device, okay? The last thing I wanna point out on this page is if we click on commands right here, and this one's one of my favorites, we can actually, we get a terminal window here and we can actually fire off commands to this device as if we were there at the computer, okay? So you can switch between PowerShell and command. Let me just fire off one real quick, get dash service. And if you know about PowerShell, this is just gonna return all the services and their statuses running on that endpoint. And you see just right there, real time, a couple seconds and it returned all the information to us. Now, if we go back out to the devices page, the other thing I want you to look at here is gonna be the groups. There's gonna be a lot of built-in groups that PDQ Connect comes with that are very useful. For instance, we got the seven zip group. It tells you what, how many devices have the latest version of seven zip installed, not installed, old, so if we click on that, we can instantly see what devices have the latest version of 7-Zip installed. Okay, same thing for like Google Chrome's got the same groupings. We've also got cumulative updates, uh, Windows version. So a lot of useful information there, but the real power comes when you create your own groups to really like customize it to your environment. Now there's two types of groups you can create. You can create static groups or dynamic groups. Static groups are gonna be ones that are just manually created. You just assign the computer, to the group and it's just gonna stay there forever until you manually remove it. Dynamic groups are gonna be built off of filters. When you set up the filter, if a computer qualifies or meets the requirements for that filter, it's gonna automatically be, be added to that group. And if it at some point no longer meets the requirements of the filter, it'll automatically get removed. We'll take a look at what that looks like really quick. So if we come down here to create group, we'll give this a name. This will be our pilot group and it's going to be a static group, okay? Now this is where you go through and you manually assign your computers. So we'll grab Hang and we'll grab Guitarra. We'll hit this arrow to assign it and hit create. Just like that, we've got our pilot group. You'll find it on the list on the left right there. 
and there's our two computers assigned. And now they're always gonna remain there unless I manually remove them from the group, okay? Now let's take a look at a dynamic group real quick. So if I hit create group, and we will create a group for this application Audacity. And this one's gonna be a dynamic group. So we will, we're gonna create a filter right here. And we're gonna filter it for devices that have the software name that contains Audacity. And we'll hit create. And you see we've got four devices that meet that filter rule right there. And at any time you can go, you can add filters, you can remove filters, you can modify those however you want, okay? And the last thing I wanna look at before we leave the devices tab is just to call out these options you have at the top here. Here you can add more columns to this screen or remove some if there's columns in there, they're just taking up space you don't need to see. Uh, you can create your own filters right here. Like if you don't need to necessarily create a group and you just wanna filter information real quick at this main screen, you can do that. Density just changes the view, however much information you wanna see on the screen at a time, and then you can export this data into a CSV. So going down the list, we're actually gonna skip deployments for right now, and we're gonna go straight into packages. This is where you're gonna be creating packages. This is where PDQ hosts a lot of its packages for you that you can then deploy out to your endpoint. So software, scripts, things of that nature. So let's take a look at some of these packages we've got here. Now, PDQ has about almost 200 packages in here. And these packages, the ones that are built by PDQ, which you'll see over here on the right, these packages are built and maintained by PDQ, which means like, hey, when there's a new version of uh, Java or Slack, we're gonna update that on our end and it'll automatically update for you inside of your client here. And this information is really great because you, you just don't even have to worry about anything. You can grab Google Chrome, you can grab FileZilla, you can just select the package, deploy it, and you're on the ground running. Uh, but you can also create your own packages. If there's something in here that you don't see that you wanna create a package for, you can easily do that using the Create Package button. We've actually got several in here that we've created that uh, we've built over the time, but these are not maintained obviously by PDQ. So when a new version comes out, we have to go through and actually manually update these. If you wanna create your own package, what you'll do is come up here to create package and then you'll give your package a name, you'll add a version description. Now, this is where you're gonna to wanna to pay attention because there are several different steps you can add to a package. The first one's gonna be your install step. This is gonna where you wanna attach your EXE file, your MSI files, things like that. Uh, then if you hit this drop down, you're gonna see a lot of other uh, package steps. You have a script step, a file copy step, a reboot step, and a nested step. Most of those are self-explanatory. The, uh, the nested step is kind of special because what it lets you do is actually embed other packages inside this one package. So if you wanted to build one package that had Notepad++, Google Chrome, and uh, Firefox, you could build one package that has all three of those nested in it, deploy it once, and you're good to go. So let's go back out. And let's actually show you what that looks like, deploying a package. We'll search for Chrome up here. We got Google Chrome Enterprise right here. Actually, I pick on Chrome a lot. Let's go Firefox. Okay, we got Mozilla Firefox. Go ahead and select it, hit deploy. You can see right here that we've got our package selected. And here we can add devices if we wanted to. So if I wanted to add IRO, I could add a single device. Or if I wanted to add a group, I could add a group as well. So that pilot group I created earlier, it's going to deploy to those uh, computers. So if I hit deploy, and while that's running, we're going to go ahead into the deployments tab, and you can actually see and track the progress of that deployment. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that. But there's a lot of good information here. Uh, it tells you when the deployment was started, tells you what application was being deployed, tells you who that deployment was going to, what device it was going to. And then it gives you, you know, the return code. If there was any errors, it tells you how long it took, things of that nature. It also tells you who it was deployed by. And just like that, real time, the application was deployed successfully. So 19 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Moving on, let's get to automations. Now, this is what we like to call set it and forget it. Automations let you set something on a schedule. So if you want Google Chrome to be deployed, Every time there's a new version of Google Chrome out or like every two weeks on a Wednesday at four o'clock, you can set that up here and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's hit the create automation button and we will call this Brock Pilot Chrome. All right, the package we're gonna be deploying is obviously Chrome here. 
Google Chrome Enterprise. Now here you can actually change the version if you want to. We're just gonna keep it on the latest since this is going to our pilot group. And then you have the option to deploy it once if you just wanted something to happen in the future, or you can make it a recurring deployment. So that's what we're gonna stick with here is the recurring deployment. We'll start it tomorrow and we'll start it at 8 a.m. That should get everybody's morning off to a great start. Since this is a pilot group, we'll repeat it every week on Wednesday. And then you can select your group right here. You can see I've got my pilot group selected. I hit save. And now every Wednesday at 8 a.m., it's going to deploy the latest version of Google Chrome to those devices. So this is one of those areas where you can save a ton of time. If you'll just spend a few minutes building out some automations, you're going to save yourself a ton of time in the future. Moving on, let's take a look at reports real quick. Reports are super easy to build out. Uh, they're kind of similar to how we built out that group. Let's take a look at what that looks like real quick. So we have uh, the reporting options. We'll just call this Rock Report. Here's where you can select your, uh, your columns for the report. Um, let's put the, you usually want the device name in there. So we'll add the name. And then let's also add software, software name and version. Okay, we'll create a, a, a report with that information on it. I can add a filter if I want to, so I could change this to software name contains Chrome. And if I target all devices, I don't have this on a schedule yet, but if I save that and run it, you're gonna see any device that has Google Chrome installed, it's gonna return that information for me. Let's say we wanted this on a, a recurring status. We go back out here, edit the report, come down here to schedule, and I could click recurring. And you kind of get the same options that you had with the automation. So I can set this to go off. Let's say we like our reports on Mondays, 7 a.m. Click OK on there, repeat. Let's do that every week. Email too, and then you could just add your email or whoever's email you need to add to the report right there. And then what's gonna happen is every Monday at 7 a.m., this report's gonna get generated and sent to whatever email you want. And you can obviously take this further. You can add filters to this. Uh, you could add different groups, target different devices. You can even take this a step further by targeting uh, custom scanners to make this really powerful. Speaking of custom scanners, let's go ahead and dive into that next. Cancel out of that. All right, custom scanners are really cool because you can kind of create whatever you want here. So we've got two right now. We've got the files and folder scanner, which lets you create a scanner that will search for any files or folders that you uh, specify in your scanner. We've also got a registry scanner that will search, obviously, the registry for any registry that, you're, that you identify. Let's take a couple that I've created here and take a look at them. Let's start with VIP members. This is the files and folder scanner. Here you can see I've got my path where I'm scanning and I'm searching for subfolders right here. Particularly, I'm looking for a file and I'm looking for uh, a file that contains the string VIP. So you can easily create that for any file you want. You can dive as deep as you want to search subfolders. And then let's take a look at the registry scanner I've built here. So this is for the hibernation status. Uh, status. Now this is checking the registry, obviously. You put in your hive and your path, and then you can search for either a key or a value. And then you put in what you're searching for right here, okay? And like I said, this information after the devices are scanned gets returned to that device information page that we looked at at the start of the demo. All right, we are almost there. Okay, variables. Variables are really cool. This is kind of like, again, kind of like automations. If you'll spend a few minutes in the variables, you can save yourself a lot of time in the long run. So PDQ obviously has a ton of variables in here from the get-go that you're able to use and apply in your filters, groups, reports, things like that. But you can also create your own by clicking create variable, give it a name, give it a value, create it. Here you can see a couple that I've made right here, app name, pick, pick app version pick pick. So I've added the name and the version to this variable. Now what's great is that anywhere I use that variable, I don't have to update it manually. I can come here, update it in one place and all the other filters, groups, reports that are built off those variables get automatically updated. So if I go back to my devices page, I can go and I can see this pick pick latest. And if I go to the filter, you can see that I'm using the variable right there and right there. And to update this whole group, I don't have to come in here and change the filter, I just update the variable. Lastly, let's look at the settings page real quick. Settings page down here, down at the icon, click on that. 
and you'll be shown your, the first thing you'll see is your teammates page. This is everyone that's on your team that has access to your tenant here. A couple things to, to note here. This is where you'll invite more teammates. Click the invite teammate button, add an email address, fire that off. They'll get an invite to join your instance of PDQ Connect. You can also go through here and you can change people's roles depending on your access to PDQ Connect, but you can see what roles everybody's assigned. Okay, now if I go to the roles section, this is where you got your RBAC settings, role-based access control. This is where you can define access privileges to features and functionality depending on a person's role for the organization. We've got a couple by default. We've got the admin role, which just has access to everything. We've got the member role, which has access to everything except managing teammates and roles but you, it's super easy to create your own role. So if I click create role, say I want to create a help desk role that they're only allowed to deploy packages. Click deploy packages. You can see everything else is unchecked right here. So they don't have uh, access to manage automations, create custom packages, manage groups and so on. We click create there. And now we've got our help desk role. We can go back to teammates and assign any of these members, a, a, a member of the help desk role. Last two things, enter ID. If you want to uh, connect your PDQ Connect instance with your Entra ID or Azure AD instance, you can totally do that and it'll return that information back at the devices page. And then last but not least is the API. So if you've ever used an API, you know how powerful they can be. We've got the API here. You can create your API key, give it a name, create your key, and then you're off to the races. Now, if you wanna actually check the documentation to see what kind of methods and stuff are available, just click view API documentation. Here you can see the various methods and stuff that you can utilize to build out kind of whatever you want. You know, it's kind of a uh, create your own adventure type of scenario once you get into the API. So that is everything. I know it's kind of a lot and I know I didn't dive into very much detail on any one aspect of it, but I encourage you to go and check out, like I said, the getting started series to really like see what each one of these features can do. Thank you guys for watching. If you wanna see more PDQ content, make sure to like and subscribe. If you got any questions, we're always down in the comments answering questions. So hit us up down there or over in the Discord channel, which we'll have linked down below as well. And uh, thanks for watching. For PDQ, I'm Brock.